arm the photon torpedoes and set your phaser to stun. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Star Trek The Original Series episodes. For this list, we'll be discussing episodes that best encapsulate the blend of action, heart, fun, and social commentary that the original series is known for. And yes, you can expect some spoilers ahead. Number 10, The Naked Time. When a virus infects the Enterprise, inhibitions are tossed out the nearest airlock. Could be some form of space madness we've never heard of. Under the hyper-drunk influence of the affliction, Nurse Chapel professes her love for Spock. I'm in love with you, Mr. Spock. Kirk for his ship, and Sulu for topless fencing. Oh my. Fencing tones a muscle. Meanwhile, the restoration of the ship's decaying orbit around PSI 2000 is complicated when control of the vessel is taken over by a surly Irishman. Roses all have left your cheeks. Who's determined to entertain the crew with an impromptu variety show. I watched them fade away and die. How long have you had that thing, Lieutenant? Since yesterday, Doctor. This morning I found out that he... I mean, she had had babies. Number nine, The Trouble with Tribbles. Undoubtedly the cuddliest installment of the original series, this episode is packed with humor, wheat, and bar fights. <laughs> While on guard duty at K7, the Enterprise and the station are overrun by Tribbles. Now he tells me. Displaying both a natural love for chicken sandwiches and a hatred of Klingons. <laughs> Jim, this man is a Klingon. The fast-breeding fluffballs become heroes when they expose Arn Darvin as the clean-shaven, suit-wearing Klingon saboteur responsible for poisoning the station's wheat. What about the grain, Bones? Thanks, Tribbles. Oh, yes, it was poisoned. Poisoned? Commodore? Commodore Decker? Number eight, the Doomsday Machine. What happened to your ship, Matt? A ship? Attack that, that thing. While trying to aid the USS Constellation, the Enterprise comes face to face with the hellish maw of the Doomsday Machine. Looks very much like Commodore Decker's planet killer. And it is pursuing us. With Kirk and Scotty trapped aboard the damaged ship. Transporter is damaged, we're taking evasive action. Commodore Decker, the Constellation's captain and sole survivor, takes command of the Enterprise with the aim of destroying the weapon. I'm in command here, Mr. Spock. Maintain your course, Helmsman. Get us in closer. Although Kirk saves the day, the highlight here is guest star William Wyndham, who channels both Captain Ahab and Humphrey Bogart while delivering a multi-layered blend of authority, vengeance, and vulnerability. There was, but not anymore. <laughs> Number seven, Arena. And I have been somehow whisked off the bridge and placed on the surface of an asteroid facing the captain of the alien ship. In one of the signature moments of the series, Captain Kirk goes up against a Gorn commander in hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> Realizing he can't win, he hatches a crafty plan but accidentally shares it with his rival on an open comm channel. He's not agile. The agility and, I hope, the cleverness is mine. Amazingly, his plan is not successful, but Kirk makes up for the blunder with an act of genius by reinventing gunpowder and making a diamond shooting gun out of stuff that's just lying around. <laughs> Number six, Mirror Mirror. Troublesome. After a transporter glitch, Kirk, Scotty, McCoy, and Uhura find themselves in a parallel pirate universe. Not our universe, not our ship, something parallel. Here, sleeves are optional, sports bras are standard issue, and everyone's just a bit evil. Oh, and Spock has a beard. In the episode that created the Beard of Evil meme, Kirk and company must hide their true nature and avoid assassination attempts from Chekhov and Sulu. What is this, Mr. Sulu? Mr. Spock has orders to kill you, Captain. While also trying to get back to their own reality. Welcome home, Captain. 
I thought you said it couldn't possibly be an Earth vessel. Number five, Space Seed. There it is. When the Enterprise team discovers the crew of an ancient Earth ship in suspended animation, it's exciting times for historians. But things go south quick when the group's leader, Khan Noonien Singh, is revived. How long have you been sleeping? Two centuries, we estimate. What ensues is a mule-kicking and axe-handle-smashing fight between Kirk and the genetically engineered Khan and their respective stunt doubles for control of the ship. When the captain exiles Khan to SETI Alpha 5, the seeds for the film Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan are planted. It would be interesting, Captain, to return to that world in a hundred years and learn what crop had sprung from the seed you planted today. The Vulcans are the last group of delegates we have to pick up as soon as we get them aboard to be able to rely. Number four, Journey to Babel. Under 14 delegates aboard for two weeks, 32 of them ambassadors, half of them mad at the other half, and the whole lot touchier than a royal matter pile over this Kordak question. The Enterprise is en route to a diplomatic conference on Babel when the Tellarite delegate is killed. I've just found one of the Tellarites murdered. I think it's the ambassador himself, sir. Suspicion falls on the Vulcan ambassador, Spock's ailing father, Sarek, but that theory is proven wrong when Thelev attacks Kirk and is revealed as an imposter. <laughs> Assumed by Spock to be a cosmetically altered Orion, the assassin would rather commit suicide than talk. <laughs> The episode is notable for introducing the Andorians, Tellarites, and the troubled relationship between Spock and his father. The situation between my father and myself has not changed. Spock, I'm asking you. Number three. What's wrong? A muck time. I need rest. Suffering the effects of Pone Far. It is a deeply personal thing. Spock returns to Vulcan to get lucky with his long betrothed bride, to Pring. There's no need to be uh, embarrassed about it, Mr. Spock. It happens to the birds and the bees. The birds and the bees are not Vulcans, Captain. However, the would-be Mrs. Spock instead challenges our favorite pointy-eared hobgoblin to a death match against Captain Kirk. I make my choice. This one. A pop culture goldmine, this is the episode that introduced the famous Vulcan salute. Live long, Tipao, and prosper. Spock's catchphrase, Ensign Chekhov, and the signature fight music that has since become a parody staple. Uh-oh. Let Klaublach begin! Alert! Alert! All day! Alert! 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 alert. Number two, Balance of Terror. Something visual ahead, Captain at extreme range. When several Federation outposts are destroyed near the neutral zone, it sparks the return of a long silent foe, the Romulans. But I must use all my experience now to get home. Although the Romulan warbird has a cloak, this episode establishes that a ship can't fire its weapons while the device is in use. Now, fire blind, lay down a pattern. Driver's pattern, all phases fire. When Kirk pursues the cloaked ship, it becomes a thrilling submarine hunt in space, as well as a battle of wits and dirty tricks between him and the unnamed Romulan commander, played by Mark Leonard. Divert all power to weapons. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I read most strongly a recent death struggle in which it fought to protect its life. We will begin with this. <laughs> Deserves a decent burial, at least. The M5 must be destroyed. 
destroy it, Kurt? No. We're invincible. Look what we've done. Your mighty starships. Four toys to be crushed as we tune. Hellers! <gasps> Assassins! I won't let you! I'll kill you first! I won't let you! Number one. The city on the edge of forever. You will get me. Murderers! Killers! An overly medicated Dr. McCoy jumps through a time portal to the 1930s, causing the Nazis to win World War II and erasing the Federation from history. Bones, no! Need more? Kirk and Spock follow Bones. And now and learn he saved the life of a pacifist who will help delay America's entry into the war. Despite falling for her, Kirk realizes Edith Keeler must die to restore time and watches in horror as she is killed by a truck. Do you agree with our list? Many prefer it more honest, more open. What's your favorite Star Trek episode? For more fascinating top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. There's something disquieting about these creatures. Oh, don't tell me you've got a feeling. Don't be insulting, Doctor.